Hello and welcome to a first. Every Tuesday I'm going to give you some student work that's going to help you get the top grades. Today's piece comes from a student of mine, uh, I say of mine, of my channel called Kimmy Chadder, who has really done something really interesting with revision. So Kimmy has gone through my videos and obviously the teaching um, Kimmy's received at school and has decided that a really brilliant way of doing revision, which I confess I'd never thought of before, was to write a revision guide. So I'm going to show you parts of Kimmy's revision guide to the language paper too. So Kimmy starts off with the things that you need to remember. Um, and Kimmy actually gave this to, uh, I don't know if it's a her or a him, I'm afraid. So um, Kimmy sounds female, I'm gonna go with female. Apologies, Kimmy, if, if you're not. Uh, so Kimmy gave this to some of her classmates to revise from. And uh, you can see that Kimmy has said, right, I'm gonna think about what order to do the paper in and thought through how to do it. I'm just showing the sorts of things that are gonna go into the guide. Um, you can freeze the screen and read it to your heart's content later. Uh, then Kimmy's gone into detailed analysis of what you need to do in question two. But it's not massive. It's not so much that you couldn't read it um, quite quickly. Uh, then she's found an examiner's response. Uh, and then summarised the things that you should do for question two. Similarly, question three, look, quick tips. Um, what the examiner's looking for. Same with question four how to get the top marks but what i want to teach you from today is what kimmy's done with question five okay i'm going to warn you already this question will probably be boring it'll be topical but chances are you'll find it boring examiners find it boring generally this question is boring see you're getting bored now aren't you how do i make this not boring go big and destroy your counter-argument throughout. You're a teenager. You're an expert in arguing. You probably argue with your parents. How do you win the argument? Well, you come up with an argument. They come up with a counter-argument. You know what they're going to say, so you come up with a counter-argument. Point being, if you're willing to label yourself a devious and manipulative, per manipulative person, you're already winning with this question. Look what I do here. So let's have a read of Kimmy's writing. Monday evening, 7 p.m. A cascade of rain glides down onto the dull grey and torn hat of the unlucky homeless man who spends his time slumped down on the damp streets of an unforgiving London. He sits there with the remnants of a scruffy jacket surrounding him, his eyes glazed with despair, the smell of personal inadequacy lingering on his clothes, his own protection, from the harsh winter weather. And so Kimmy says, look, here I'm going straight in and immersing the examiner in imagery, playing on the expectations and getting the methods in. Well, let's have a quick look at those. Um, so we've got a curtailed sentence. It's not a proper sentence. It has no verb, Monday evening. Same with 7 p.m. But look at the rhythm it creates, Monday evening, 7 p.m. It's quite hostile, isn't it? Then we get this long descriptive sentence as a contrast where Kimmy's saying to the examiner, look, I can't just do short sentences. I can wow you with something impressive as well. Let's have a look at the power of verbs because verbs are what, going to, uh, are what is going to give your writing power. So the rain glides down. That's a contrast, isn't it, between how the homeless man is feeling, he's unlucky, but the rain is feeling smooth and happy almost. Uh, he spends his time, what's he doing? He's slumped down. Again, a really powerful verb that lets us know how uh, vulnerable he is. And that again is contrasts with the rain which is just gliding. He sits there with the remnants of a scruffy jacket surrounding him. Sits is in one sense not that descriptive, However, it portrays him as unable to move. And why is he unable to move? Because he's surrounded by his jacket. That's a really odd verb, but the verb suggests that the jacket is like an army surrounding him or a gang surrounding him. 
Um, so even though it's an odd word to use to describe the jacket, it gives you the sense that he's not just protected by it, he's actually threatened by his own clothes. His eyes glazed with despair. It, look how powerful that is instead of just saying closed. Glazed gives you the idea of the hopelessness which is in the expression. Okay, so you can see how powerfully the verbs work here. And you can also see how these really long sentences show off Kimmy's skills. Right, let's look at this next sentence here, which is a single sentence paragraph. A really great way to draw the reader's attention to an important point. This is not always the face of homelessness in Britain. Did you see what Kimmy did there? Here, we had a really intricate description of a homeless man but then suddenly this is all of Britain so that homeless man now becomes an image or a metaphor for the whole of Britain really powerful technique when you're writing your persuasive piece and as Kimmy says BAM this subverts the readers expectations going big and relating to the country as a whole you see what she did we expected it to just be about this single character, but no, suddenly, that single character represents everybody. Homelessness is what happens when you're one month's salary away from losing your home. Homelessness is when you've tried everything you have. Everything. When you've sold everything, auctioned everything, leveraged everything, sold your mother's engagement ring to the pawn shop, haven't eaten, slept in your car, but now they've taken your car. Slept in a tent, but they've taken that too. So let's have a look at what Kimmy highlights as the skills. She's got a huge number of skills in this bit of writing. Hammering the message home, and that's done through the repetition. Homelessness, homelessness, everything, everything, everything. Really powerful way to create a kind of drumbeat where you're hammering your point, exactly as Kimmy says, hammering your point home. The variety of sentence lengths, again, hammers that point. It's got a real rhythm to it. And then Kimmy picks out, contrast this by honing in on real situations. So, for example, these are generally... Gen, sorry, general ones. You've sold everything, you've auctioned everything, leveraged everything. But then, let's get specific. You've stolen your mother's engagement ring and, and sold that. You haven't eaten because you're too hungry. You've actually slept in your car, but now your car's been taken away. So Kimmy's actually thought, right, how many ideas of actual things happening can I pack into my sentence? And you can see how powerful it is when you read the sentence in full. And look... At that, that is a super long sentence, a great way to show off. So my word counter is saying that's 39 words. And if you can show off to the examiner like that, they really are desperate to give you the higher marks. Right, let's double click on this space so we can see it all in one place. So, and here, examiners like it when you adopt a persona and address the, di the reader directly. So this is a different topic. It's about um, snow days. And she's invented a persona of a teacher and asked herself, well, I wonder how my teachers feel on a snow day. Um, quite an interesting thing to do. Did somebody mention snow? Again, addressing the direct reader directly. Tuesday morning. Again, that two word sentence. According to my timetable, it's period one. Period one. But 1,000 mentions of a coveted snow day are spreading like the plague and surrounding me in a claustrophobic embrace. Snow, the one concept that invariably arouses feelings of despair among the teachers in the country as we unwillingly shuffle our feet from floor to floor. There's the uh, powerful verbs coming out again. The shuffle of the feet conveying how miserable the teacher is about going in on a snow day. I've already had to deal with an accident. Of course, a year 11 throwing a snowball at a year 7 was definitely an accident. I love the use of italics there to show her sarcasm. Slipped around five or maybe six time, times on the chain shackles commonly referred to as stairs and suffered from hypothermia due to everybody, and I mean everybody, choosing to use the kettle. So this is a favourite technique of hyperbole over-exaggeration, again linked to those really concrete examples, real examples of things that could happen. 
Now, readers, that is an inconvenience. It's even more troubling to have a se to have to separate a group of uncivilized beasts succumbing to the desire to throw snow at each other. So hopefully you can see how those techniques that Kimmy talked about earlier, repetition hammering things home and uh, subverting the reader's expectations by zooming in on a character and then going large. Um, Kimmy's done again that here. We've got the single teacher and then going large by suggesting that that teacher represents all other teachers and this single year 11 attacking a year 7 uh, child represents all school children. Then Kimmy has another technique, destroying the counter argument by portraying it negatively. So imagine what your opponents are going to say and describe that in a negative way. So again, we're with the theme of um, snow. Or perhaps you associate snow with Christmas. The idea that snow makes a day special is utterly nonsensical. Well, it's March. Year 11 have their GCSEs, Year 12 have their mocks, and I don't think I mentioned, but Year 13 happen to have their A-levels. Or maybe you're lazy. You love lounging on the sofa with the comforting presence of coffee and a banal television programme. So hopefully you can see how she picks an enemy, and the enemy is the person who's going to give an argument that she disagrees with, and so she gets straight in and attacks that argument in advance. And that's really sophisticated. Students who anticipate what um, their opponents will say automatically move up to grade seven at least because you're thinking strategically about the structure of your answer. The structure of your answer is trying to attack people who disagree with you and therefore it's much, much more convincing. So let's look at the next bit of advice. Have an interesting introduction. Imagery is a great way to start, but here's a more conversational way. I'm not sure if you've noticed this lately, but a new virus is permeating society. It's not Ebola. It's not cancer. Notice the rhythm again that um, Kimmy gets with her repetition. But it is deadly and it is just as valid. It's an unhealthy obsession that dominates most conversations. Again, the really powerful verbs, it dominates conversations. In fact, if you were an alien visiting Earth for the first time, you would be really confused as to why so many of the world's societies have made shrinking themselves their main preoccupation in life. And this is a really interesting alien perspective. What on Earth is she talking about, about people shrinking themselves? Are people really making themselves six inches tall and um, going to sleep in bedside cabinets or trying to squeeze under doorways? No, that's not what she's talking about. She's talking about people starving themselves in order to look uh, Instagram ready and beach ready. She's talking about body dysmorphia, people who are dieting in order to make themselves into some incorrect vision of perfection. Then comes the next bit. Go big! Zoom out to the future of society in the conclusion. And this is one of my favourite techniques. When you start writing about the future, you really do something that other students aren't doing. You're starting to consider what will society be like in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years time. And it just makes your argument that much more powerful. And it's even more powerful when other students don't do it. Because remember, your mark depends on how you're different from the other students doing the exam. So let's see what she does. Sadly, the diet industry isn't going anywhere. It makes far too much money to be dismantled over something as apparently trivial as people's mental health. We've had years of education, yet nobody ever told us how to accept ourselves. Notice how she keeps using contrast. Um, on the one hand this, but on the other hand that. It's a really powerful way to structure your sentences. We're teaching children that the most important thing in their life is losing weight, so they forget about their passions, their futures, their aspirations, their dreams. So this is how society will be um, ruined because of this obsession with weight in the present. This is how it will be ruined in the futures. Imagine we started obsessing about things we loved about ourselves. The future wouldn't be as bleak. What a wonderful world that would be. 
No starvation necessary. We can dream. And that's a really clever way of ending because you could read it different ways. I just, I just read it in a kind of dispirited way where the writer expects nothing to happen. Actually, we're still going to be obsessed with our appearance. We can dream. But you can read it the other way. No starvation necessary. We can dream. It can be read the other way. And because the reader knows it can be read both ways, we can infer that the writer is caught on this balance as she expects us to be caught on it. Really powerful. Uh, so I hope you've benefited a lot from writing techniques there. And obviously you can just go back to previous screens and try out sentences yourselves that mimic what Kimmy has done. This is a brilliant resource that she's given us. Uh, and then here's her final advice. Finally, you've got this. Don't panic. The paper is untiered. How hard can it be if it's meant for foundation students too? Uh, and I think that's quite powerful, actually. Um, even the least able in terms of English are able to do this paper. Uh, so it's not there to catch you out, at least Question five definitely isn't. And uh, you can easily make a success of it if you try out the techniques Kimmy has advocated. And finally, Kimmy finishes with keep writing. Ask me if you need anything else. Well, just put it in the comments below. If Kimmy's watching, she may reply. And she may say, Miss Sally's, you idiot, I'm a man <laughs> or a boy. I don't know. But I will also um, reply. And if you'd like your work considered for a video, please post it. Thank you very much. Good luck in your exams.